Hi everyone. Uh, so um, my talk will be on extending your in, uh, enterprise integration patterns beyond ESPs. Um, so first of all, um, uh, why do you use an ESB? So I'll start with the basics. So ESB, uh, basically an ESB is used uh, basically to um, connect different disparate like software systems together. Um, like uh, to to uh, basically uh, create an uh, abstraction layer to the outside, uh, so uh, you have like a seamless uh, like connectivity between the uh, systems, and uh, you basically encourage loosely coupling uh, between them. So uh, that's mainly the idea of uh, of an uh, of an ESB. Um, so. Uh, but actually, uh, enterprise integration goes beyond ESPs. So uh, what are the other things that you will do with uh, enterprise integration? So, uh, so there are other complementing features for enterprise integration, like, uh, for example, uh, I have listed a few here, data integration, like messaging, uh, business processes, complex event processing, uh, like monitoring features, tracing, and so on. So all of these also come into your enterprise integration solutions. So I'll go through uh, each of these uh, one by one with some additional information. Uh, so uh, data integration. So um, if, you, if you take the WC2 solution on um, uh, enterprise integration, our WC2 EI uh, product, so we have built-in uh, data services features as well. So uh, other than the, the typical ESB features like uh, uh, for um, like you would have for like uh, message routing, transformation, uh, protocol switching, and so on. So other than those typical ESP features, so um, another critical thing that you would uh, need is uh, data access. So everything starts with data, and like basically uh, that's the the basic building block for everything. Uh, so uh, so because of that, so we have included the data services functionality also. Uh, uh, out of the box. So um, using that, uh, basically you can access uh, like uh, many types of data sources, like starting from relational databases to a NoSQL database like Cassandra and document database like MongoDB, spreadsheets, and so on. So all of different uh, types of data can be accessed through this interface. So um, uh, we have very easy way to uh, generate these data services. So we have a, a declarer language, XML-based declarer language for this. And uh, and also like a UI-based wizard to create these services. So basically with a uh, few, like several clicks, you can expose uh, a, a data source as a service, as a SOAP service or REST service uh, using EI. So, um, uh, so let's uh, go into some of the specific features we have there. So we have like uh, uh, data security uh, features like uh, uh, transport level security, uh, uh, authentication, uh, like uh, and for uh, filtering capabilities we have like role based uh, access controls uh, features. So that is that is like uh, if you have several like specific fields uh, that you don't want to expose to the outside uh, where, uh, with uh, with the with the authentic uh, with the user roles that uh, the authentic user would have. So that kind of things can be done here, and uh, also uh, transactions. So transaction is an important thing when you work with data. Uh, so um, we have uh, with uh, local transaction, we also have distributed transaction support as well uh, because. In the data service, we have the way to uh, group requests together and to do bulk uh, requests, bulk updates. So when uh, when multiple requests are always uh, like coming to the picture, you have to think about transactions. So we support like uh, uh, extra transactions with data services. So if you have a typical uh, 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 JDBC drive which supports extra data sources, you can uh, use that in data services and. Um, when you use like multiple databases and so on, you can make sure everything happens in a single global transaction. And uh, also data federation. So um, uh, so we have uh, like a easy way to uh, uh, like merge uh, like read data from multiple data sources 
in a single data service and combine them together. So uh, using our uh, different queries and operations, we can uh, combine multiple queries and get a single uh, federated result uh, from data services. And uh, of course, so, um, uh, so when we are using uh, data service, so we, the, the requirement comes also to uh, work with uh, uh, large data sets. So, uh, so then uh, the data the streaming becomes critical. So uh, we have data streaming support also, so uh, for XML and JSON. Uh, so if you have like a, a compatible data source like uh, RDBMS or Cassandra, uh, like that, uh, can have the data, the results it as big as you want, and it will just stream to the uh, client. So uh, and uh, so with these features, basically, uh, the idea is to. Uh, by using the ESBs inbuilt other features, uh, you can create uh, much more higher level, uh, like advanced features. For example, if you want to create like uh, specific like uh, master data management features or change data capture or something like that, you can like mix and match the features that they are in the ESB and data services, and you can create these solutions. So uh, it's just a matter of, a matter of uh, 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 using the right features uh, together. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, then uh, we move on to uh, messaging features that we have. So um, uh, so in the EI, so we have uh, integrated our uh, message broker uh, product as well, the features into the uh, EI product. So uh, there you basically get um, the message brokering uh, features out of the box from EI. Uh, so you don't have to install it separately uh, and use it. So uh, so messaging is a very important part in your like uh, in enterprise integration. So um, as I have listed down here, like uh, these aspects are critical to specific situations like asynchronous messaging, uh, reliable messaging, uh, uh, and um, uh, scenarios like uh, you want to do like point to point messaging versus uh, like pops up scenarios. So. Uh, uh, and uh, also other things like um, uh, request data, uh, request uh, rate matching. So I'll go uh, into this in detail a bit. Uh, so um, asynchronous communication is basically, uh, so the usual one, uh, request response, synchronous one is um, when you do a, a call to a remote uh, entity, that that service or, or someone should be live at that moment, so for you to get the response at that time, or else it'll it'll immediately fail. So, uh, but that's not the case uh, always in real life. Like sometimes, uh, temporary the, the target endpoint can be down, it will not be available at right at that moment, and so on. So, um, so messaging then sometimes has to be asynchronous. So that means uh, you will send the message. Uh, to some uh, reliable source, and uh, we, we will get the uh, we will get the uh, 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 the, the, the notification saying that it will be sent to the target uh, when it's available. So that's what's happening with the synchronous message. So you have you can see here uh, as an example of a synchronous messaging is like email. So uh, uh, email is sent to a, like a central server first, and uh, the the recipient gets it. Later, when he's checking the mail, uh, so likewise. So, um, so there are scenarios like that where this is uh, very useful in the when connecting two systems together. And uh, another thing is uh, reliable messaging. So, um, uh, of course, uh, the, the the usual uh, uh, request response paradigm. So, uh, if you are using a uh, uh, typical transport, uh, you may not always have the reliable uh, aspects when you are doing the messaging. Um, that is, uh, if you are sending a message to someone, you may not know whether it got delivered or not. You may be unsure like what really happened. Uh, so uh, you have to like stop situation like multiple messages being sent to the uh, target uh, and so on. Uh, so to be sure about, uh, to be sure. Uh, on that not happening, so uh, uh, we have to use a reliable messaging mechanism. So uh, the mes uh, message broker provides that using uh, this approach. Basically, uh, we first send the message to the broker, and it sends an acknowledgement saying, "Okay, I got the message." 
And uh, after that, uh, so the, the recipient or the, the target service basically gets the message from the broker. And only after it consumes the message properly, it will send the acknowledge and uh, uh, like uh, that will basically delete the uh, message from the uh, broker. So you have to use this mechanism to make sure that uh, you are uh, doing a reliable messaging uh, uh, transaction there. <coughs> So um, uh, another thing is in messaging, so we have uh, two modes of op operating. So with either using queues or topics. So you basically use queues when you want to do like point to messaging. Uh, so point to point is basically you have a single consumer uh, where uh, it will be consumed by only a single, uh, uh, sorry, a, a single producer. And uh, there, uh, only a single consumer will be uh, using that uh, one message. So, uh, uh, so if you have a set of messages being sent to a queue, uh, you can have multiple consumers, but uh, they, uh, they will load balance uh, through all the messages. So uh, basically, the same message will not be sent to all the consumers. Um, so uh, the other thing is true for topics. So that's actually a one-to-many scenario. So. Uh, uh, so there, what happens is we send a message to a specific topic, uh, which can be a hierarchical topic also. And uh, other basically consumers can subscribe to that topic. So uh, anyone who subscribes to the topic will get the, get the message. So uh, all the people that are subscribed will get the same message. Um, so those are the two ways. And uh, uh, in the topic scenario, there are like, uh, uh, durable and uh, non-durable subscriptions because in uh, queues, uh, if the consumer hasn't like uh, consumed the message yet, it will not be removed from the queue. Obviously, uh, in topics, uh, the, the default one is um, if the subscriber is not uh, uh, live at that moment, uh, he will miss it. So only the live subscriber, uh, the subscriber will get the message. So, but uh, then in the case of a durable subscription, so uh, uh, they will actually keep the message in the topic and will uh, send the uh, message when the uh, subscriber comes online later. So, so, so that option is also there uh, in that mode. <coughs> uh, another, another requirement we would uh, have is when you want to uh, do uh, rate matching on uh, like uh, client and server. So, uh, uh, when you are sending like a uh, uh, specific request to a service uh, which is for example much, which is much slower than the uh, client you want to like buffer the request and send it to the client so uh, 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 so you can use a message broker for that uh, basically the uh, the backend will only uh, pull the messages uh, when it's ready so all the intermediate ones will be uh, buffered in the message broker, and uh, the uh, sender will not be affected. Uh, yeah, then uh, another thing in uh, uh, the enterprise integration is uh, long-running business processes. So uh, uh, this requirement comes when you have a specific business process that has, uh, which is uh, basically like a workflow, uh, which has to happen in uh, specific uh, sections and which may have like human interaction and so on. So uh, those things also come into play when we are actually building a real, real world scenario. So um, things that come into play are like service orchestration, correlation, which is basically matching different uh, service request responses together. Uh, state persistence is basically what you need for long running process. So because uh, uh, when a process starts to run an instance, uh, it can, it should like uh, store its state and may uh, like start it up later. So for that you need state persistence. And as I said, uh, if humans are uh, brought into the scenario, you need like things like human tasks and so on. And uh, so the supporting technologies for these are, so what we support in EI also, uh, BPL and also uh, BPMN. So you can use either one of these to uh, create your workflows. So uh, this is a simple example on how you would use a uh, business process. So uh, business process, uh, process basically 
uh, do the orchestration. So for example, here it's like a account opening uh, workflow, which uh, talks to different uh, like multiple endpoints and get the work done. For example, account opening, you may talk to a, a data service uh, to create the, uh, the database entries for the account and an ESB uh, to do the, uh, the, the other account opening logic and another uh, service to do like uh, card issuing and so on and so on. So, uh, so basically what the business process does is uh, uh, like talk with these multiple endpoints and uh, make a, a composite application. <coughs> Um, another thing is, uh, so analytics uh, is become like a, 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 a integral part of your uh, like a digital business. So in your uh, integration solution, always uh, the the analytics will give you the value addition you need to go to the next level. So uh, uh, one of the ways of doing that is complex event processing. Uh, so uh, with that, you can do like uh, uh, in your uh, integration system, you can find patterns from uh, uh, specific events that are happening in the system. Uh, so, and you can do things like, uh, which like throttling, anomaly detection, and so on, uh, which can be very useful in uh, optimizing your system. <coughs> so, uh, so in EI, we have uh, some, uh, a few out-of-the-box analytics built in using our uh, real-time analytics. Uh, so one is the business process statistics. So here they give you statistics on like uh, how the business process, uh, uh, the instances are uh, uh, working, the, the, the average uh, execution times, uh, if they have uh, worked with like uh, have human interactions, how many times, and so on. So all these stats can be uh, like calculated and visualized in a dashboard like this. So in the same way, uh, we also have for the ESP profile as well uh, for the stats. Uh, like the requests, like the failed events, what are the, are the anomalies that are happening, and so on. Uh, as for uh, throttling, so um, we can we we have uh, extensively used the complex event processing for our API throttling feature as well. So um, in uh, if you look at our API manager product, uh, so which is basically uh, housing our uh, the, the ESB engine, um, it's also doing the API throttling via our real-time analytics. So any uh, request uh, throttling uh, and uh, uh, like anomaly detection and so on has been done with this analytics. Um, so yeah, this is another extended example of how an anomaly detection is done. So uh, using our CP features, so uh, we have uh, made several solutions to do uh, like anomaly detection using the, uh, the the messages being stored and so on. And uh, yes, other uh, nothing is uh, specific service monitoring. Uh, so uh, so we use uh, both uh, batch and real time analytics for this. Uh, so uh, to build specific KPIs like the uh, the, the service request response, failure rates, uh, uh, the average uh, uh, response times, and so on, and also the service health. So uh, using this. Uh, analytics mechanisms, we have created these dashboards uh, to be available. So uh, then another important thing is uh, in your uh, integration solution is uh, tracing. So uh, you may f uh, like mostly want to do this uh, like for uh, like inter like uh, the service audit purposes and so on, like to see what's actually happening with your uh, service request, where it's going, uh, what has gone wrong and so on. So, uh, so these are also available out of the box in our uh, EI uh, uh, product. So, uh, so basically, what it does is, uh, when requests are going through your uh, uh, like integration platform, uh, uh, so the each individual uh, touch points basically emit events uh, to be correlated at your analytics solution. So. Uh, uh, we basically get events from all over the place uh, places, and uh, we combine them to give like a uh, like overall tracing view on like what has happened in your system. So um, I'll give an example on that also. So uh, this is what basically happens in our ESP message mediation tracing. Uh, so um, if you get a ESP message uh, 
mediation flow uh, sequence. So each of the mediators, uh, we can track what's, what has gone through, uh, what the events and the messages have gone through the mediators, uh, debug them, and see where the problems are, and so on. So basically, from this, you have the full view of what has happened through, the, uh, through your integration platform. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, wraps up the, uh, the feature list for the, the, uh, for the integration platform. So, um, uh, so those are all the things, the extended uh, uh, view of the, the integration platform. So other than uh, when you talk about an ESB, so this is how you can extend your uh, ESB to, uh, uh, to have the other integration plat uh, patterns, basically. So I hope you find it, found it uh, useful. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, we are looking into an event-based uh, approach. And uh, I see that you mentioned um, the message, uh, message storage. Yeah. How persistent is it? Uh, it's basically uh, backed by a relational database. So it's a persistent uh, message store. OK. So yeah. 